Okay, we're on uh, problem number 22. <coughs> right here. And when you see this on the test, and you will. It says find the tangent line to this one right here at this point. Tangent line. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. All right, we know x is 1, we know y is negative 5, so this would be y plus 5 is equal to, don't know m yet, x minus 1. Okay, we need to find m. m is the derivative of this, plugged in, x equals 1. So, to do the derivative of a fraction, you do low, b high, minus high, which is 3x plus 2, derivative of low times 2, all divided by low squared. Now, um, in this write-out example, they did algebra. You do not have to do this algebra. You can plug in 1 right now. In fact, I'd recommend it. Just plug in 1. x is 1 right now, and then find out the answer is when you plug in negative 1, or when you plug in 1, it's negative 13, and you get this right here. Now, looking down, um, on the previous problem like this, there's a bunch of answers. Your answer is probably not going to look like this. I'll guarantee it's not going to look like this. It's either going to be written in this form, 8x plus by equals c, or it's going to be written in y equals mx plus b. One of these two forms, which all you have to do to algebraically to do this, um, if it's going to be this form right here, y equals y plus 5 equals negative 13x, and then this would be plus 13. Then you subtract 5 from both sides. You get y is equal to negative 13x plus 8, uh, eight right? Yeah. yeah okay, if it was written in this form. If it was written in this form right here, just get all the x's on the left and all the y's on the left, and then the constants on the right, and match your answer up. Okay, it'll be one of these two forms on the test. Good. Okay, number 23. All right, number 23. And after this one right here, we pop to a calculator stop. Okay, it says, at what point does the graph have a tangent parallel to this line? This is the second problem we've done like this, so there won't be one on the test. Okay, parallel to this line. Well, what they're saying is parallel to its slope. Parallel lines have parallel slopes. So we have to change this 4x minus 2y equals 5 into, we got to find the slope. So we got to basically get y equals. So minus 4x off both sides, minus 4x off both sides, you get negative 2y is equal to negative 4x plus 5. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2, and to be honest, because we're trying to be fast, you only get two minutes per um, non-calculator question and three minutes for calculator questions. Do I really have to put this fraction over both of these? What do I, what's the only thing I care about? The slope, right? What is the slope? Negative four over two is two. Two x plus, don't care. I just care about this two. Okay, so what they're saying on this one right here, when, is the derivative tangent parallel? What is the derivative? Two. Well, the derivative would be y prime would be uh, two fourths x to the one power. So really one half x. When is that equal to two? Okay, multiply by two. Multiply by two. X equals. 4, when x equals 4, all right? At what point on the graph? Okay, this isn't a point, this is just an x. To find the y, you got to plug 4 back into which one? This one or this one? The equation of the tangent line right here. Okay, I mean, so this is the, this is the one that's parallel. We just used this one to find out the slope was 2. We gotta plug it into this one right here, so it'd be y is equal to one fourth times four squared, uh, which is what four? C. 
16 divided by 4 is 4. Answer is 4 comma 4. That's it. All right. Plug it into the other equation that happens. You would get just completely the same answer. Uh, if you plug in the other equation, you're going to get the wrong answer. Uh, you're always plugging it into the, the thing. The, the one we're going to do the derivative of, the original. All right. Okay, these next questions, I was looking at them in last period, and some of them are pretty tough, but they're not that bad when you break them down. So I'll go really slow if you want. Okay, this one is pure calculator, and you got to know how to use your calculator in this one. I don't think the math is even, it'd be pretty tough to do the math in the amount of time you're given without a calculator. If you guys have a calculator, you can try along with us if you want. Um, okay, we've taught, when, you can do a double derivative on your calculator. I haven't shown you just because I don't think they've never done it so hard that you can't just do one derivative on your calculator. So what I'm saying is this. It says to graph, here's the original function. And they say, find a uh, change in concavity. Okay, change is concavity. That means POI right here. They want to know where the POI is. So you got to do two derivatives. <laughs> but I don't want to show you that on your calculator. I'm just going to show you one because you know how to do one, and let's just do one because this thing is super easy to do. This derivative is super easy to do. So what I'm going to do is y prime is equal to this would be three times one third, which would be one x squared minus two x minus five. There it is, right there. Uh, minus five plus three. And derivative of sine. Go ahead. Oh, on the test, I am going to write all the notes you need. Whatever. If you say Ziegler, what's the formula for what uh, e to the stuff? I'll, I'll write it on the board for you. I'll write them all. They'll all be up there. And if there's one I missed, I'll just write it up there for you. So you don't need notes or sheets or anything like that. I'll put every formula you need up here. Uh, this is cosine. This is negative cosine. So they're asking what the derivative of sine is. Go ahead, I'll write this one up there too. The derivative of sine is cosine. So this is three cosine x. Now, since we're graphing the second derivative, I have to do the derivative of this on my calculator, right? Okay, which is, you know, that's what I wanted to show you. But could you actually just do the derivative of this again by hand and then type it in there? Just because it's not that hard. All right, but we'll do that one. We'll do the derivative of this. So, hopefully I can do this. So, right, math. Eight. Derivative dx of x squared uh, minus 2x uh, minus 5 plus 3 cosine of x. What if you're not in radian mode? It's automatically wrong x equals x. Whenever you're graphing derivatives, x equals x. Zoom. You guys remember what it is? Zoom what? When you're doing trig. Zoom seven. Zoom seven. All right. Uh, there it is right there. Since we're looking for POI, or when it changes, this is, by the way, below, this is a y double prime graph. Everything below this is concave down, frown. Everything above, concave up, up. And in between concave down and concave up is POI. To find it, it's called a zero. Whenever it crosses the x-axis, it's called a zero. So you press second, calculate. We're going to try to find a zero, which is two. Enter. And it says left bound. Enter. Over to the right. Oops, that's no, fine. Enter.
2.02, 2.206. You guys get that? Is that what the answer says on the deal? 2.21. 2.21? They just round off. Absolutely not. What? That's the only answer. answer. That's wrong. What? 2.206. Does that answer say 2.21? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they rounded off. Yeah, that is wrong. You guys know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's three decimals. It's Even always been three. It's never not been three. It's three decimals. If on the test it is that, don't it won't. It. It, this is this test is current. Okay. Uh, this review sheet is not current. Hi. Right. Ah, yeah. Look at this. So this only has two decimals, but this has what three? That's this is wrong. This is bad. This is a bad example. Sorry. I mean, it's, it's still a good question. It's just they should have three. All right, the next one. Okay, number three is pretty rough, uh, but it's not that bad once I show you something. Uh, two, this is another graphing calculator at one. So let's do that one. So another question with a graphing calculator. And I we haven't done this one in a long time, so maybe you want to play along on this one. Number two says, we have a function. It says, for what positive value, that means something, because it's probably going to be a negative value also. For what positive value of x is the slope of the tangent line, so that means do the derivative of this function. When is the slope of the tangent line, meaning when is the derivative equal to 6? And what I'm saying is, do the derivative, y1, do 6, y2, and see where they intersect. So it's not a zero. We haven't done intersect in a long time. So let me write this equation. So y equals 5e e to the 3x. Could you do this by hand? Could. Yes. But will your calculator do it for you? Sure will. Why not save time and not do it by hand? All right. So here we go. Back to the calculator. <coughs> So math, 8, ddx, 5, e, to the 3, in my ears, too. Pretty rough. All right, 3x cubed. This guy. This guy. I turn it on whatever mute, but it just doesn't work. All right, is that good? Did I type it right? I just hung up on him. All right, we're good. He's like, hello, hello. All right, and then, wait, wait, wait. We want to know when this equals 6, right? Mm -hmm. So you type 1 in y1, you type 1 in y2. One graph's going to go like this, and one graph's going to go like this, and intersect is when that happens. And so we type 6 right here, and then you press. Now, we're in we're in Zoom 7 right now, so what should I press to get out of the trick? Mm -hmm. Zoom 6. So press Zoom 6. There it goes. Oh, wow. Okay, here's six right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it crosses one, two, three times, but which one do you pick? The positive one. So they, they wrote that in the deals. Only pick the positive one. So this is a key we haven't hit in a while. It is intersect. So second, calculate, not zero this time, intersect. And they're going to say, what two lines are you intersecting? I want the blue one and the red one. So blue, and red. enter, and then red, enter. But there's something key on this one. Do I have to guess on this one? I have to because there's actually three answers, and I'm going to have to guess really close to that spot. If I push it a little too far to the left right there, it's going to give me that spot right there. Make sure your answer is positive. Yeah, as long as it's positive, it's the correct one. Yeah. So I press enter, and the intersection positive, is so that's right. Positive point 
three, four, three, three decimal places. Great question. All right. Okay, the next one seems rough, but it's not. It's not bad at all. Now, this problem can actually be done on a calculator, except for one tiny thing. Are these calculator answers? No. I could just set one of these equal to y1 and one y2 and do intersect again. That's how you solve equations. But because these aren't decimals, now you could do that and then find out what this decimal is, find out what this decimal is. But remember, you don't have that much time. So here we go. Let me read it to you and let me break it down. So it says, if f of x is equal to the square root of 2x, if the rate of change, what does the rate of change really mean? Derivative, slow. Okay, it's the derivative. Rate of change on this problem is going to be in the derivative. If the derivative at x equals c is four times that when it's x equals one, then c equals. Okay, so it seems confusing, but let's just do this. Let's just do the derivative. So the derivative of uh, well, let's write it regular. F of x. Okay, this is hard to do, so we're going to write 2 to the x to the 1 half power. Now when I do the derivative, f prime of x, the 1 half goes in front. Keep the 2x, minus 1 half, or I'm sorry, minus 2 over 2, which is negative 1 half, times the derivative of the stuff, right? Which is 2. two. So it's just... So it's going to be top bottom. So top, <coughs> bottom, top on there, right there, and then this right here. Does this go to the bottom? So not only does the negative shoot it down, but then it's square root of two x. But then these twos cancel out, so you just end up with one over the square root of two x. So this is f prime of x is equal to one over square root of 2x. Now, that's the derivative. Now they're saying, hey, we're talking about two different things, when x is 1 and when x is c. Couldn't you, before you did the top bottom stuff, couldn't you just take the 2, multiply it times the 1 half, so it kind of cancels out? Yeah, you do it now, later, whenever you want. Negative square root you bet. of 2x. Yep. Sure. Yeah. You could have just said, that cancels, I'm not going to do top bottom. Alright, so, they're comparing these. Now, they want the derivative at 1, and they want the derivative at C. But they say something about them. They're not the same. So it says, at C, the rate of derivative at C is 4 times when it's at 1. So this is 4 times bigger than this. How do you make them equal? And they're not. This one's four times bigger. Yeah. Multiply That's this one by four. Yeah. You guys okay with what I just wrote right there? That's the hardest part of the problem right there. They say the rate of change of the derivative at C is four times when it's at x equals one. This is four times bigger. So to make them the same, multiply this by four. Now we know that we, all we have to do for this is put a one in, which is going to be... 1 over uh, 2 times 1, isn't it? But there's a 4 there times 4. And on the other one, you just put a C in there. So it's 1 over square root of 2C. Now we're just solving for C. Did we talk about this yesterday? Crisscross, applesauce, or whatever. Okay, so here's the derivative, right? I put 1 in there, and put it on the left side, and I put C in there, and I put it on the right side. And this side right here is 4 times, this side is 4 times bigger, so I had to multiply this side by 4. Okay, we're going to cross multiply, and you get the square root of 2 is equal to 4 square roots of 2C. Uh, what do you do now? How do you get rid of 4? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. Uh, sorry, we're going to have to go over here. We're going to have the square root of 2 over 4 is equal to uh, the square root of 2 
see. You guys know the square root of 2c, this is algebra. The square root of 2c is really the square root of 2 times the square root of c. So how would you get rid of the square root of 2? How do you get rid of times the square root of 2? Divide by the square root of 2, divide by the square root of 2. Oh, look at these guys cancel out. And you get 1 over 4 is equal to the square root of C. Now what do you do? Uh, square. square it. So. Square it. And you get um. uh, one, 1 squared over uh, 4 squared is 1 over 16. That's the answer. Yeah. So uh, seems like a really hard problem, but not that bad. Watch this video again a couple of times so you can get this one right on the test. A lot of help. Don't worry, man. So glad we got the video. All right, the next one, uh, it's been a while since we've done limits, but i got to be truthfully honest. I think you guys are way better now than you were before. Okay, here's the main deal with limits. What it intends to do from the left and to the right is what the limit is. So if they both want to be this height at this time, that's the limit, even if there's a hole there. If the right-handed, or what would this be? If the left-handed limit does not equal the right-handed limit, then there is no limit. There is a right-handed limit and a left-handed limit, but not necessarily the limit unless they actually want to go to the same spot. So first thing it says, what's true? It says the limit of A is equal to the limit of B. From the left and right of A, the height is 3. It wants to be 3. So the limit, this right here, is 3. B, there's a right-handed limit and there's a left-handed limit, but there's no limit at B because they both don't want to go to the same spot. So this is not true. The limit as X goes to B, as we go to B, is 3. No, there's no, limit does not exist. There's no, it, it wants to be, let's say it wants to be 3 from the left and it wants to be 1 from the right. That limit does not exist. The limit at A does not exist. Yeah, it does. The left and right both want to be the same height, and that height is 3. So that's false also. Okay, oh, the limit at A is 3. We just discussed that. It is 3. The left and right one both want to be 3 at A, right there. And the last one, so this is true, the last one says the limit of B is 1. Okay, from the right it wants to be 1, but the left it wants to be 3. It's got to be the same for it to be a limit. So uh, maybe... That seems a little easier than it was back in chapter two. Hopefully it does. If not, you will get it before May. All right. Okay. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday. Is that uh, it's called rate of change? It's section four point six. And of the rate of change problems on this test, this is the hardest one. I think there's three. I think they did three of them. We did one with the ladder yesterday. Then there's one right here with the rectangle. Then there's one with the circle. So it says, so I think there's going to be three on the test. Uh, if the length of the rectangle is decreasing at a rate, when they say the word rate, that means the derivative. Okay? And then they say the width is decreasing at a rate, that means the derivative. Uh, which of the following must be true about the area of a rectangle? Okay, so they're talking about some geometric formula, which just happens to be the area of a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is length times width. So now we do the derivative. The derivative of a is dA dt, or it's 1, but since I took the derivative of a, you write dA dt. Now, this is product rule. So first times the derivative of the second, what's the derivative of w? dW dt plus second times the derivative of the first, and the derivative of l would be dL. Alright? So here we go. Uh, let's use this information. It says the length is decreasing at a rate. That means the derivative of L is now decreasing at a rate of 2 inches per minute. So dL dt is 2 or negative 2? Why negative 2? It's decreasing. It's getting smaller. So this is negative 2 plus, um, it says the width is increasing at a rate of 2. So this would be positive, positive two. 2. So 
So the area is changing at this rate right here. And this rate, dA dt is equal to 2L plus, or actually minus 2W. Okay, that's all you know. So that's all the calculus right there. Now from this information right here, you have to come up with one of these answers. Now is A always, is the area always increasing? No matter what I put in for length and width, will this always be positive? No, because what if uh, the W is bigger? Wouldn't it be negative? You guys know negative derivative means decreasing, positive derivative means increasing. So this is wrong. This A is always decreasing. So always increasing would mean L is bigger. Always decreasing would be W is bigger. That's not true, because it could be either one. But it says A is increasing only when the length is greater than the width. So when the length is bigger than the width, will this be a positive or negative number? It would be always positive, wouldn't it? Yeah. So it's increasing when the length is greater than the width is the answer. That is a hard solution set for kind of an easy calculus problem. You guys okay with that? You want to talk about it or are you good? All right. That's uh, one of the related rate problems. Watch the video again if you missed that. Okay, this one, it looks tough, but it's not. And probably not use a calculator. The only part you need the calculator for is the end. So they give you a position, which they call that S of T. Sometimes they call it X of T. Velocity, acceleration. This in your mind is y, y prime, y double prime. Okay, so they give you a position, and they say, what is the body's velocity when its acceleration is zero? Okay, this, this right here, this when the body's velocity. Don't worry about that. That's the end. Acceleration is zero. That's pretty easy. I just take two derivatives, set it equals zero. I want to find out when the acceleration is zero. The acceleration of zero is, okay, first derivative be 3t squared minus 12t uh, plus 9. Second derivative, 6t minus 12. So when they say when the acceleration, which would be the second derivative, when the acceleration is 0, when is that? When is the 0? I don't know. Add 12. Add 12. Get 6t equals uh, 12. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. t equals 2. At time 2, the acceleration is zero. What's the actual question? By the way, look, there's an answer right there, too. You're like, oh, I got two. Circle it. No, that's not answering the question. The acceleration is zero at time two. What's the body's velocity when the acceleration is zero? And the acceleration is zero at time two. So, put two so I put two in two. The velocity equation. The velocity equation to find out the velocity. Where's the velocity equation? Uh, it's right above it. This one right here. So it would be 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 9. Type that in your calculator, press equals, and you'll get negative 3. So not that bad. Yep. It's kind of unrelated, but like the y primes, is that like Roman numerals? Like if you did like the fifth prime, would it be a v instead? No. It's not? It's just dashes every okay. time. Good question. I'm going to be good if you want to. All right. All right, this one right here is probably one of the toughest trig questions on there. And I'll show you why. Okay, um, they're asking about the mean value theorem. In the mean value theorem, what number is this? Seven? We'll stop at seven. Okay, the mean value theorem, this will be the last one. The mean value theorem is when is the derivative equal to the slope? So there's a lot of trig going on here. If you struggle with trig, watch this one. First of all, I don't know, on your answer or on your thing, does it say x over 2 or pi over 2? It says x over 2, so it's been changed. So this is x over 2. We've changed this sheet lots of times since we've been doing it. 
So they say mean value theorem. So we got to find the slope and then we got to find the derivative. Well, derivative, that's pretty easy. Let's do the derivative right now. F prime of x is equal to the cosine of stuff. The cosine of stuff. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Keep the stuff. And then derivative of one half x. What's the derivative of the stuff? One half. By the way, is this one half right here times this, or is it times the whole expression? The whole expression. Okay, let's rewrite this. Negative one half sine of x over two. That's the derivative. That's f prime. So far, so good. Oh, good stuff. Okay, now uh, we got to find the slope. How do you find the slope? So we're going from here to here. So we need to plug pi over 2 into there, and we need to plug 3 pi over 2 into there. So when you plug pi over 2 into here, so this would be the cosine of 5 pi over, so if it's pi over 2 over 2, it would be 5 pi over 4. Minus, these are the y's, cosine of 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, over 2 is 3 pi over 4. So that's the y coordinates. The x coordinates are going to be 5 pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 2. Okay. Okay, cosine pi over fours, they're pretty easy. Cosine of pi over fours, that's root two over two. The same with sine, sine and cosine pi over fours. Now this is one pi over four, two pi over four, so one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, this is three pi over four, four pi over four, four pi over four, that's actually pi, and then five pi over four is right here. Now, um, sine is root 2 over 2. Cosine is root 2 over 2. Okay, it doesn't change right here. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. This one right here, it's still root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2. Um, I said sine and cosine. Really, I meant cosine, sine. We always go x, y, x, y. Except for one little tiny thing. Um, it's over Cosine is over to the left, so it's going to be negative root 2 over 2, but up root 2 over 2. So that's 3 pi over 4. So the, uh, the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2, which is this one right here. Negative root 2 over 2. So let's do this one over here. So this is 4 pi over 4. This is 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over Still negative root 2 over 2, comma, and then the sine is root 2 over 2, but we don't even need the sine. So negative root 2 over 2, this would be a negative root 2 over 2. Subtract the y's. So negative root 2 over 2 minus negative root 2 over 2 is going to be 0. doesn't even matter what the bottom is, it's going to be 0. So when is the derivative, which we found out is this, equal 0? Okay, this is a really hard mean value problem because they have a lot of tricky problems. In fact, think about your time right now. How much time have I already used on this? Four minutes? Five minutes? Okay, maybe you would table this question at the end if you had time. I don't know whether you would have spent all this time on this question when you could be answering easy questions. All right. Uh, how do we get rid of the negative one half? Multiply it by both sides, it ends up going away. The sine of x over 2 still equals 0. We're trying to solve this equation right here. Multiply both sides by negative 2, and it would end up being this right here. When is the sine 0? Don't look at this. When is the sine 0? Isn't it right here and here? So at 0 and pi. So when would 0, right? Sine of 0 is 0. When would x over 2 equal 0? When would this equals 0, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, x equals at 0. Okay, now let's do it again at pi. Sine of pi is 0. So when is x over 2 
equal to pi. Multiply by 2, multiply by 2, x equals 2 pi. So my answers are 0 and 2, two pi. pi. But one of them's wrong. Zero is wrong. Why? It's outside of the interval. The interval goes from 3 pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. Therefore, the answer is pi over 2. Do your homework. Good luck.